Prostacyclin is a prostaglandin member of the family of lipid molecules known as acosinoids. It inhibits platelet activation and is also an effective vasodilator. As a drug, it is also known as epiprosinol. The terms are sometimes used interchangeably. History During the 1960s, a UK research team, headed by Professor John Vane, began to explore the role of prostaglandins in anaphylaxis in respiratory diseases. Working with a team from the Royal College of Surgeons, Sir John discovered that aspirin and other oral anti-inflammatory drugs work by inhibiting the synthesis of prostaglandins. This critical finding opened the door to a broader understanding of the role of prostaglandins in the body. Sir John and a team from the Wellcome Foundation had identified a lipid mediator they called a Euro-OEPGX, a Euro which inhibits platelet aggregation. PGX, which later would become known as prostacyclin, is 30 times more potent than any other then known anti-aggregatory agent. By 1976, Sir John and fellow researchers Salvador Moncada, Richard Grigalewski and Stuart Bunting published the first paper on prostacyclin, in the scientific journal Nature. The collaboration produced a synthesized molecule, which was given the name epiprosinol. But, as with native prostacyclin, the structure of the epiprosinol molecule proved to be unstable in solution, prone to rapid degradation. This presented a challenge for both in vitro experiments and clinical applications. To overcome this challenge, the research team that discovered prostacyclin was determined to continue the research in an attempt to build upon the success they had seen with the prototype molecule. The research team synthesized nearly 1,000 analogues. Through innovative work done by researcher Lucy Clapp, treprostinol has demonstrated a unique effect on PPAA gamma, a transcription factor important in vascular pathogenesis as a mediator of proliferation, inflammation, and apoptosis. Through a complementary, yet cyclic AMP-independent pathway, treprostinol activates PPARs, another mechanism that contributes to the anti-growth benefits of the prostacyclin class. Production Prostacyclin is produced in endothelial cells from prostaglandin H2 by the action of the enzyme prostacyclin synthase. Although prostacyclin is considered an independent mediator, it is called PGI2 in acosinoid nomenclature and is a member of the prostanoids. The series 3 prostaglandin PGH3 also follows the prostacyclin synthase pathway, yielding another prostacyclin, PGI3. The unqualified term prostacyclin usually refers to PGI2. PGI2 is derived from the ipermil-6-arachidonic acid. PGI3 is derived from the ipermil-3 EPA. Function Prostacyclin chiefly prevents formation of the platelet plug involved in primary hemostases. It does this by inhibiting platelet activation. It is also an effective vasodilator. Prostacyclin's interactions in contrast to thromboxin, another acosinoid, strongly suggest a mechanism of cardiovascular homeostasis between the two hormones in relation to vascular damage. Degradation, prostacyclin which has a half-life of 42 seconds, is broken down into 6-keto-PGF1, which is a much weaker vasodilator. Mode of action Prostacyclin is released by healthy endothelial cells and performs its function through a paracrine signaling cascade that involves G-protein-coupled receptors on nearby platelets and endothelial cells. The platelet GS protein-coupled receptor is activated when it binds to PGI2. This activation, in turn, signals adenyl cyclase to produce CAMP. CAMP goes on to inhibit any undue platelet activation and also counteracts any increase in cytosolic calcium levels that would result from thromboxin A2 binding. PGI2 also binds to endothelial prostacyclin receptors and in the same manner raise CAMP levels in the cytosol. This camp then goes on to activate protein kinase APKA then continues the cascade by dephosphorylating the myosin light chain and inhibiting myosin light chain kinase, which leads to smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilation. It can be noted that PGI2 and TXA do work as physiological antagonists. Members, Pharmacology Synthetic prostacyclin analogues are used intravenously, subcutaneously or by inhalation, 
as a vasodilator and severe Raynaud's phenomenon or ischemia of a limb. In pulmonary hypertension. In primary pulmonary hypertension, its production is inhibited indirectly by NSAIDs, which inhibit the cyclooxygenase enzymes COX1 and COX2. These convert arachidonic acid to prostaglandin H2, the immediate precursor of prostacycline. Since thromboxin is also downstream of COX enzymes, one might think that the effect of NSAIDs would act to balance. However, prostacycline concentrations recover much faster than thromboxin levels, so aspirin administration initially has little to no effect but eventually prevents platelet aggregation. This is explained by understanding the cells that produce each molecule, TXA2 and PGI2. Since PGI2 is primarily produced in a nucleated endothelial cell, the COX inhibition by NSAID can be overcome with time by increased COX gene activation and subsequent production of more COX enzymes to catalyze the formation of PGI2. In contrast, TXA2 is released primarily by unucleated platelets, which are unable to respond to NSAID COX inhibition with additional transcription of the COX gene because they lack DNA material necessary to perform such a task. This allows NSAIDs to result in PGI2 dominance that promotes circulation and retards thromboses. In patients with pulmonary hypertension, inhaled epiprosinol reduces pulmonary pressure and improves right ventricular stroke work in patients undergoing cardiac surgery. A dose of 60 AA microgram is hemodynamically safe, and its effect is completely reversed after 25 minutes. No evidence of platelet dysfunction or an increase in surgical bleeding after administration of inhaled epiprosinol has been found. See also, essential fatty acid, references.